Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to go through some of the comments from the previous video. The question is, do I have confirmation bias? Let's get into it. In this first part, I have overlaid the images of the animal with some previous footage that I took just after a bushfire. I'm basically killing two birds with the one stone. I'm able to compare my animal to the swamp wallabies as well as getting a good indication of the height of the animal. One thing I want to point out is the animal is moving in real time. There is 0.15 seconds between each frame. What I can see is that the animal and the swamp wallaby both have different body shapes. The wallaby has a very arched back while it's walking past the camera. Yeah, and here are some emus just because. For size comparison, here is me walking in front of the camera. I think we're safe to say that the animal in question is up to my knee, and I'm a 6 foot 4 tall bloke. My knee with the same trainers on is 55.8 centimeters high, obviously with some leeway in the measurement. Let's say the animal is 55.8 centimeters in height, or 1.8 foot. I can then extrapolate the height and easily work out the head to tail length, which is 94.8 centimeters or just over three foot long. If this animal was a dog it would have the same height as a golden retriever but with a body length without the head of a great dane or basset hound. If there's such a dog please let me know in the comments. Here is a video of one of the biggest quolls I've ever seen. Remember if you like this video please hit the like and subscribe button. So according to the government, a quoll can be as long as 76 centimetres head and body and around 40 centimetres max in height, some 20 to 30% smaller than the animal to the right. According to the government, a big brush-tailed possum is 55 centimetres from head to tail, some 40% smaller. But let's not just trust the government, let's hear from Bindi and Robert as they have their say about this brush-tailed possum. Meet Pip, the common brush-tailed possum. She's about 14 now. Yeah, it's true, and this is about as big as they get. She's a very big girl because she loves her food. Okay, before you answer my original question, do I have confirmation bias? I want to show you some evidence that I have collected from the same area. An area less than 10 acres of pristine Gippsland bushland. Ask yourself, Am I looking for or interpreting information based on the beliefs that I think the thylacine is still alive? The first red square, the five trail camera images that we have already gone through, from the same camera, an animal that appears to have a Tassie devil like tail. The second red square, a near perfect quadruped track line showing possible thylacine front and back feet properties. Four toes on the back, five on the front oval shaped spread of toes, the fifth toe adjacent to the metacarpal pad and not below it like a dog's dew claw, and a hock located behind the metacarpal pad. The third red square, exactly the same track line as previous. However, these must have been mummy or daddy, as they're as big as my hand. The fourth red square, just another ambiguous quadruped, bipedal hopping past the trail camera with a long stiff tail. So what are your views on just some of the evidence I've presented from this very tiny area? Let me know if I'm delusional with my own confirmation bias or in fact on the right path. And does this area need more investigation? More cameras? Maybe water DNA testing etc? Please leave your comments below and thanks for watching. Cheers Christian.